Hello everyone and welcome back to Aspire to Be. Today we have Jay Dharmawangza who works as a uh, social media influencer and a marketing agency owner. So Jade, let's get the ball rolling. How did you get to become where you are today as a social media influencer and also as the owner of your own marketing agency? Hi everybody, my name is Jade. I used to be in FBLA for two years, was my own chapter president, uh, co-president. So I also went to state and national. So I've been through FBLA for most of my high school. And I just would say my entrepreneurial journey actually started before. So when I was nine years old, I made YouTube videos just for fun. There's no business to it. But what I was doing was building an audience and learning how to make content to market products. So when I was nine, I made videos about playing with dolls. So I was selling dolls as a byproduct of making content around that. So I had a whole e-commerce store selling on eBay, Amazon, and um, even Etsy. So that's my start. And then I just joined FBLA to just compete in a, a field called video production. I believe that's just the name of it. So it was just doing what I loved. Like I loved making stories for products. So I entered in anything that you could say that was video production. And FBLA helped me a lot. The, the role plays and the you know scenarios helped me really understand um, kind of how to practice in a real life setting. So when I went from, you know, I would say 14 to 16, that was like when I was really in FBLA. Um, I started my marketing agency at 16. So like basically using the skills I learned throughout my experience, I started to go in real life to talk to real clients. So instead of, you know, making a video for a test scenario, I would make a video for a brand or a local company. That's how it started. And my YouTube took off at that same time. So when I was 16 and 17, like between that age, that's when my YouTube grew zero to hundred thousand in under a year. I moved out to LA and I had to say goodbye to my FBLA roots, but I did leave school at that time. So now I'm 19 and I still do my marketing agency to this day. We work with some of the biggest brands like Logitech, Converse, Shopify. It's pretty cool to say that. And I did start an FBLA to two, only four years ago, I would say. That's really awesome. So what does a typical day look like you handling such a large platform? Oh, that's a good question. In the morning, I wake up at six and I'll surf before I get started at nine. Yesterday, I had a meeting with the director of marketing at Shopify. So I'll typically have meetings from 9 and 5 p.m. I'm not even sure sometimes what I do because um, being the CEO of a company, you do a lot. Like you do, you make videos for the brand. You talk to maybe the people that work with you, so my team, and then I work with partners that I have in my clients. So honestly, from 9 to noon, I do, I guess, three things. I'll either talk to clients or brands that I'm working with for campaigns. I'm working with my team, so like giving feedback on a video or I'm working with a creator, so an influencer, or myself. So one of those three things I'm working on, but you know, it's a mess. I will sometimes, I had to get better at saying no, actually, this year and last year. So I try not to work beyond 5 p.m., but sometimes it happens. Yeah, that totally makes sense. So what would you say are like the three major events from your education years or in childhood that kind of pushed you to where you are today? I mean, obviously you're 19, so you're still kind of growing, but what were those big like formative events that you can think of i've been going on i i i know this is an fbla themed interview but i'm not joking i think it's genuinely when i went to international anaheim conference um 2017 that genuinely changed my career not because like i i didn't even win in the international which is funny i actually didn't even place <laughs> for video production it's kind of funny but it was the fact I was able to meet like-minded people. That changed the game. Cause you know, when you're in your chapter president, like people might be take FBLA less seriously, but when you are in a state or especially in a national level, you basically are meeting the, like one of the most brightest ambitious people that are like-minded. And I met so many people that wanted to start their business or they were doing entrepreneurship. And I was like so motivated. So I remember if you actually scroll my YouTube channel, which is just my name, uh, I vlogged the whole experience of me and my friends I met going to make content, shooting videos, talking about our dreams and futures. And that literally changed my life. I don't I don't think people know that because no one sometimes knows what FBLA is, but 2017 actually was life altering. I got to get motivated to start my own thing because I saw people like me doing it. That's one pivotal moment. The second one was probably when I left high school. I think it wasn't as epic or happy. It was honestly more scary, but it changed my career because I was able to focus 100% my full-time attention onto making content in my agency 
And I think the last moment is probably recently. I mean, this pandemic has taught me so much about patience and sometimes you have to pivot your business. Like our, my company had to pivot multiple times. Uh, before we were catering to food companies, we were doing marketing for food brands and we had to switch it to a tech company. So like, it's a weird world right now. So, you know, the whole last year was a pivotal switch and I'm so thankful that I was able to, you know, survive in such an economic crisis with unemployment. Um, I'm very thankful, but it definitely was a hard year. Yeah, that's really awesome. Those are really cool things to talk about. Are there any advice or thoughts that you have running in your head about talking to someone uh, like that would want to follow in your footsteps? I would say, so someone maybe starting an FBLA too, or just in general? Or just in general, like wanting to become a social media influencer on their own marketing agency, whatever professional goals like that are similar to yours. So if you want to do social media full time, specifically that bubble, my recommendation is it is really hard to make content when your friends laugh at you for it. So you have to have a really supportive circle. I'm telling you, you got to cut out a lot of people because I know this for a fact. I got bullied when I walked into school because I uploaded a YouTube video that we, it's hard. I don't think I was consistent during middle school because I didn't cut out people. In high school, I started to. So like, have a good circle, okay? Because if you're trying to be a social media influencer, you're not only putting yourself in public, but you're putting yourself at the risk of judgment in your own school. So you probably should just be prepared for that judgment and at least have a supportive circle so when you do get that judgment, you have someone to talk to. Thankfully, I had my parents. I didn't really have that many friends, but I had my parents that supported me. So that's one. The second thing I think is once you get a nice supportive, supportive group of people, YouTube, TikTok, whatever platform you do choose, it is really all about experimenting. I think a lot of people give up. I think by their 10th video, they're like, wow, I suck. Wait till you're a hundredth. I didn't monetize my YouTube channel till seven or eight years after I made content, my first piece of content. So just be really patient. You might have to work multiple jobs before you can rely on social media full time. That's just how it is. But you just have to experiment. So don't complain until you just try at least, at least a hundred videos. I know that's a lot and I know that's scary, but have fun with it. That's why my third tip is make content you like, don't chase the views. Because you're gonna be here for a while, so at least enjoy the process. So if you see a big trend, but that's not you, I, you, you can chase it, totally do that, but just realize that it's not long-term because you need to be here for a while. So that's for social media. Now for marketing agency, it's a little different. I would say same advice, cut out people you don't like. But in terms of you know gaining marketing skills, I started on local companies. Like I literally, I remember this, I, it's kind of embarrassing, but all I was good at, most of us, if you're like anywhere from 13 to 20, we're pretty good at social media. Not because we're social media experts, but because we grew up with the phone, right? So anyone listening to this right now, if you're an FBLA, especially, you're, you're more than likely pretty good at social media, right? Now, the problem isn't social media, it's the confidence to sell yourself. That's the hardest thing. FBLA context is a little nice because you're in a safe environment. So keep doing that. Honestly, role plays really do help. Like if possible, try to sign up for as many role plays. I also did DECA. So I, I was all in the business clubs, but try your best to get as much experience. Now, if you really want to take it to the next step, what I did was I took you know my role play experience, took it really seriously. And I now transferred it to real life scenarios where I was pitching to local businesses. I could run their Instagram. I remember literally calling a cold calling a random mobile shop, like bubble tea shop near down my street. So nervous. I was 16 and you could hear it in my voice. I'm just like, hi, like, <laughs> I'm so nervous. And I was like, I would love to run your social media if there's a chance we could have a meeting. The owner said yes. We had, I literally, wait, I have to have a photo if I can find it, but 16 year old Jade, you know, literally instead of going to lunch and eating with friends, I went my lunch break to the boba shop. Like that's literally what I did. And I remember I was super nervous. I had this proposal of like, it's gonna cost like $250 a month to run social media for you. I'll post 30 posts. Like I, you know, I created a package and they said no, but hear me out, okay? The point of it, it was not the no, but they told me that, hey, if you wanna do a trial run for a week, then maybe we can try it out. So I did a trial run. I learned so much and I just repeated it to the next local shop. And you know, now I work with way different brands, um, but if I would recommend anyone to get started for social media, and marketing agency, it's a really about the support circle. You're gonna get rejected a lot. So have a nice support circle. If you can't, you know, you can always contact me or message any of the um, people in your clubs. I would recommend that. The second thing is 
you just have to experiment and put yourself out there and start small. Affiliate is a great way to do it, but yeah, role plays actually do really help and they are so transferable in real life when you're pitching yourself. That's really awesome. And then finally, if there's one thing you could tell yourself growing up to get to where you are today or just something you would have changed or done differently, what would it have been? So. I know a lot of us maybe watching this are super ambitious scholar people. I had a 4.0 GPA for <laughs> not too long, honestly. I think when I was my sophomore year, I started to take a little too much time on um, other clubs like DECA FBLA and other stuff. So I got maybe like a 3.9. But anyways, point is, I think a lot of us are really school driven and grade driven. My best advice is I freaked myself out when I first got my 3.8 GPA. I think. I freaked out. I was not going to get into the college I wanted because I wanted to go to USC, which is a very expensive school if you don't have a good scholarship. And I didn't have a lot of money growing up. I could not pay for that without a scholarship. So I freaked out. I think my sophomore year when I got like a 3.8 GPA, I took all AP classes. I also freaked out on my AP tests when I got like a three or four. I just wish I could tell myself that it's going to be okay. I don't think anybody I, I mean, I, I could be totally wrong about this too, but if I just slept a little longer instead of doing homework for until 2 a.m., I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not saying don't do homework at all, but if I, you know, slept a little longer and I maybe hung out with a little bit more friends, I think I would have just been fine in terms of my career. I would have been fine. I personally didn't need school after that, and I'm not opposed to school, but just right now I didn't need school for the work I do. This doesn't mean I'm not going to come back, but I don't think it would have changed anything. If I slept a little longer, hung out with more friends, that's okay. Same with you. Like if you're freaking out because you're not going to get to the college, most likely or not, it's going to be fine. Maybe not in the first six months, you're still going to freak out, but five years, 10 years, it's not going to hurt you. I wish someone told me that you don't have to like work till 2 a.m. and you don't have to join every single club to like get the best, you know, on paper recommendation. Like you don't have to do all that. You still, you still should do most of it. But I'm, t I'm talking more about that edge when, when people get really competitive like me, where it's like, I want to get a five on my AP. I want to get a 4.0. Like a 3.8 is still good. I wish someone told me that. I thought 3.0 was horrible, which some people might also think so. But, you know, I think that you're going to be okay long term. And I don't think, like I said, it's so hard to say in the moment because all my life from maybe kindergarten, I would say to like, you know, high school, you're told that your grades matter. And they, they are so important, but they're not important to sacrifice your sleep and happiness. Like work out, like go hang out with your friends, go to a party that's safe and corona friendly, like do all those things before you like drool yourself because at the end of the day, it's gonna be okay. So I hope that's helpful and I wish someone told me that. That's, that's really enlightening, that's really awesome. Thank you so much for meeting with me today. We'll have your socials down in the bottom of this. Thank you again, I can't express enough gratitude for meeting with me, this is really awesome. Of course, Logan, have a great one. Thank you. You too. Bye. Bye.